It's loving rebuke time. I'll rebuke myself first and then I'm going to rebuke a lot of you out there. Um, <clears throat> I have always been a believer in the catching up before the time of Jacob's trouble and I always will be because it's the doctrinal position of the New Testament. And uh, I've argued with many people over the years on that. I have all the studies answering everybody's questions so you won't move me from my position. Thank you very much. But uh, there's one negative thing that comes along with that way of thinking. And that is that you just become kind of pessimistic and, and just very lazy and you don't want to do anything. Um, I remember back in 2011, I was into the whole rapture date setting thing. I thought, well, 2011, it's the 400th anniversary of the King James Bible. Therefore, it's going to be the rapture, you know, catching up of the body of Christ. So I don't really have to do anything and I'll just listen to sermons and play video games or something, you know. So I was into back then in those years. And, you know, I fell for the September thing. Uh, different guys, I mean, it wasn't, Faker Breaker wasn't around in 2011. Back then in those years, uh, on YouTube at least, I never saw any of his stuff. He wasn't really around until 2015 uh, that I ever saw on YouTube. But there were others that were coming out with the September thing. The Feast of Trumpets or whatever it is, you know. And this is going to be the rapture, it's going to be for sure. It's just as sure as you live and breathe. You know, and I was thinking, yeah, okay, that's the 400th anniversary of the King James Bible. And um, so it's going to be soon. You know, September came and I thought, well, not much time left. <laughs> and the whole thing. Well, look at all the corruption out there in the world. That doesn't matter. It's supposed to be this way. I'm not going to do a thing to fight against it because we're leaving. And um, so September came, September went. And on about October, November, in that area there, a uh, young lady contacted the ministry and um, we started writing back and forth. And by May of 2012, the next year, I was married to that young lady, my wife. And um, I never thought that that was going to be possible. And unfortunately, because I was of the rapture mindset of just give up on the world, I didn't have a whole lot of money because I wasn't working for many years. I just was studying the Bible and listening to audios and there weren't many videos out there to, to watch in terms of online. I spent a small fortune on uh, VHS tapes first and then DVDs later on after that. But, uh, you know, hey, the Lord's coming back. There's no point in trying to prepare for anything. Um, and then, of course, you know, Lord had us move here to Maine and um, gave us a son when we moved here and and uh, he's blessed me quite abundantly and I thank everybody out there that's continued to support the ministry because that's a big part of the blessing it allowed me to continue over all these years to produce a video and to answer people's questions and study the scriptures and do just massive amounts of research which we continue to do to this very day here in late June 2024. Um, so, but I look back at my life and I think, how much could I have gotten done had I not been into this uh, just quit, the rapture's coming soon mentality. Um, and that hurts me to think about that. And I realize how much sin and how much evil have I just kind of turned away from, I don't need to talk about that or just forget it because it's all part of the end times and whatever and I'm not going to fight it. And um, unfortunately a lot of evil has grown because of myself and a lot of other preachers out there uh, that just turned a blind eye to it because you know, the Lord's coming back so it doesn't matter, we don't have to think about this stuff. Um, it's a shame. It's a real shame, and um, I know a lot of us fall for this whole thing, and uh, it's very easy to fall for it, that you just think, well, he's coming back, so thankfully we're going to be leaving. Um, well, the Lord will be taking us out of here sometime, but quite frankly, I think we have some time to go yet, and I think it's going to get very rough, but here's my point. Uh, how rough it gets, 
I believe is dependent upon the body of Christ. You see, one of the prophecies for the end times in the Pauline epistles is that people would have a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. Well, whenever you see something like that, then that works both ways. There are some that would have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof. But if those are there, then there would be ones that uh, have a form of godliness, but they don't deny the power. In other words, they, they accept the power of God in their life. They want the power of God in their life. They do things, they're, they're active. They're not passive. And as a result, um, you can have some freedom. I'll give you some practical application here. Uh, back when I was living in Pennsylvania, Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, there was absolutely no chance at all for me. It was just, uh, I'm going to uh, live with my parents because I can't afford anything. And um, yeah, I did. And I just, again, I was just, well, the Lord's coming back, so who cares? Doesn't matter. I don't have to think about money or whatever else because, you know, I don't have to think about retirement or whatever else. I don't have to plan for anything. And um, I got married. And uh, one of the great reasons for marriage, of course, is uh, the Bible in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 says about to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife. There is that, the marriage bed, the intimacy in marriage. That's an important thing. But there's something I believe it's even more important for a single guy that just is wasting his life away, and that is get married, you have responsibility now. You have a wife to take care of. You have a, a son or children to take care of. And um, that's important. It's good for you. It builds character. It truly does. And all of a sudden, you start to have to think about some things of the world. And uh, you start to just not only say, you know, I have to work for a living and I have to provide for my own. But you also start to think, you know, if I don't do anything about this Black Lives Matter organization coming into the town here, they're going to burn everything down, including my house and smash my car and probably try to beat my wife up or, you know, rape her or something or beat my children and sodomize them or something. I probably should do something about that. Hey, you know what? Maybe I should get a little bit more active in, you know, name it. And I speak this to my great shame because for so many years, I just kind of forsook that stuff and just kind of went, oh, whatever, I don't have to worry about it because of the rapture issue. And brethren, um, it's fine to long for his appearing, to love his appearing. The Bible talks about that in, I think, 2 Timothy chapter 4. Yeah, love the appearing of Jesus Christ. Be anxious to see Jesus Christ. I am. But we are supposed to fight the forces of evil. If we don't, who will? You know, let's, oh, don't worry, we'll get Trump in there and he'll take care of the forces of evil. He is one of them. What are you talking about? Trained by the Jesuits? Um, you know, the guy's got the morals of an alley cat, which I've talked about different times. You know, it's amazing how the preachers of this country that'll, you know, would kick a man out for sexual sins. Well, maybe they would. I guess maybe they won't anymore. But, you know, yet Donald Trump's a great man, man of God because he'll read from the Bible or talk about the Bible or talk about Jesus or something. Yeah, okay. Um, it's a problem. And I'll tell you right now, we need to do something about this. We cannot just passively say, hey, you know what? The uh, perverts are coming in to make a, a pride rally or something like this. And that's okay. You know, they have a right to do that. I can't do anything about it. It'd be considered hate crime or something. Okay, getting back to some solutions here, because I'm really angry about this whole thing. I'm starting to rant a little bit, so please forgive my ranting. Solutions. Lot, you're in Sodom and Gomorrah. Come out. The Bible teaches in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 about come out from among them and be separate and touch not the unclean thing. You're supposed to come out. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. What fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? What concord hath him that believeth with an, you know, an idol or whatever, an infidel? Getting the verse all mixed up here, but look it up. We're not supposed to be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. We're supposed to have biblical separation. Standards of sanctification. Get away from these wicked people. Get away from these wicked systems. So if you're living in Sodom and Gomorrah, get out. Oh, but brother, I know the Lord's coming soon. The Lord's coming soon. Yeah, yeah. 
I used to say the same thing. I said the exact same thing. Um, get out of Sodom and Gomorrah. I am on land right now. Uh, we have a good amount of land here. The Lord provided us with. Again, when I was in Pennsylvania, looking at land prices around where I was at, it was ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Couldn't afford anything. So I looked for a place to, to come to that would have cheap land. And um, we came here. Oh, I'd love to do the same, Brother Brian. We don't have much money. You think I had money? <laughs> you think I was wealthy? Uh, very, very poor. Very little money. And we scrimped and we saved and we've lived without electricity and we uh, haven't had running water in a home since 2018. Uh, we got by eating potatoes and you know onions, fried potatoes and onions for a long time when we first came to Maine. Barely had any money. Um, you know, I mean, if you have to live in your car, if you have to live in a van, if you have to do whatever you have to do, get out of Sodom and Gomorrah. That's step number one. Step number two as a Christian, okay, we're out of Sodom and Gomorrah. Then you need to stop fearing these wicked, corrupt systems of man. Don't worry about being politically correct. Uh, you can't be politically correct as a Bible-believing Christian. The Bible forces you to speak things and say things that are political, politically incorrect. Um, again, you know, if I was living in some place, I know... A brother from Scotland the one time said, Brother, he said, if you were over here in Scotland, he said, you'd be arrested for what you preach. <laughs> uh, I'm sure. Uh, modern Sodom and Gomorrah over there. I know that they passed this hate crime legislation and things, um, which is dis disgusting. And uh, you get this guy in the parliament, and he's talking about um, all these different white people in Scotland, you know, and how evil this is that everybody's so white in Scotland. What's a historically white, you know, uh, Anglo-Saxon Protestant type of a country? You know, I have ancestors that go back there, the Campbell clan. If you know anything about the Campbell clan, my maternal grandmother was a Campbell. So I've got some Scottish blood in me. Um, but you know, stand up, man, fight. Uh, do you fear God or do you fear man? Uh, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof um, from such turn away. Okay, you, you meet a bunch of sissy professing Christians, and we go to our church and we don't want to say anything because we'll lose our tax exemption. Uh, get away from them. Don't mess with them. Run from those wicked people. Again, Christians need to start to say, you know what, we're going to form our own groups. Let's get back to the New Testament way of doing things. You know, actually meeting in homes that aren't controlled by the government. You know, uh, we're all for government. I'm all for government. It doesn't have to even be a Christian government. Just affirm the rights that I have. Freedom of religion, freedom of, of speech, freedom of press. Uh, don't just openly persecute us. You don't have to have uh, leaders up there having, you know, Bible studies and praying and things. That'd be nice, but I don't have to have that. Just simply leave us alone. That's the whole thing. We're to pray for those in authority. That, we're, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life. Um, that's what I want. But if they don't want to do that, if they want to start coming after us um, and not upholding laws that this land has been governed by, then I'm not okay with that. And so, um, again, move away from Sodom and Gomorrah. Get out of Sodom and Gomorrah. Learn to live cheap. Learn to live in a way that... Um, you can have more freedom. Uh, if you're in an area where you can't have freedom, then go to some place where you can. You know, I moved from Pennsylvania, my ancestral homeland in, Pen in America. You know, it's where my ancestors settled in 1720. I moved from Pennsylvania, moved, you know, 18 hours to the north. So don't say, well, brother, I just can't move from here. I did with very little money. It was rough. Bought an old house that Many people wouldn't have even lived in that place. And we lived there for years. You know, I, I'm not getting, going to even say what you know I live in right now because I'm not putting out everything on YouTube, but it's off grid and an old house in town that again needs lots of work. We're still living cheap. It isn't some kind of a thing of, oh, now we've got it great. No, we don't, not compared to most people, but we're free. I can walk around on my property here. I don't have any rainbowed 
haired freaks or whatever walking around. Um, you know, so, but what, what can we do? Okay, get away from Sodom and Gomorrah, step number one. Step number two, we need to start becoming more outspoken. And I really think that we need to fight these wicked people, um, the perverts out there. And I know I remember reading this thing the one time this guy said, there shouldn't be any you know, flag against the sodomites. We should just use it, you know, the American flag or something like that. Well, unfortunately, I don't believe that's working. And we need to start taking steps to restore things in this nation. Um, number one, and another thing that we need to do is we need to um, push for the rule of law to be restored. Um, if there are people here that are here illegally, that means it's against the law. Uh, if something is illegal, it's not legal. Uh, that should be fairly clear, but I guess it isn't to some people. So, um, you know, get rid of that. Um, people are doing public nudity or indecent exposure or corruption of minors, prosecute it. It needs to be done. I would like to see, you know, if the police aren't going to do it, if the police will stand down, then I think, you know, the people of America, law-abiding citizens should start to stand up and say, okay, these people need to be arrested. Something needs to be done here. Again, people need to start becoming more outspoken. They need to say, enough is enough. This has to be stopped. Uh, find out laws, you know, study things and whatever else. Again, I cannot do everything myself. Um, it's just frustrating to me. And, you know, I know what it's all about. It goes back to the passive thing of the rapture belief. We're leaving soon. Don't bother doing anything. You know, well, do you bother tying your shoes? Well, no, the rapture could happen. I won't be taking my shoes with me. Um, do you bother eating? Well, no, brother, because the rapture's coming soon. And I don't bother to eat because, you know, well, of course you eat. Of course you tie your shoes. Of course you brush your teeth. Of course you comb your hair. You take a shower or whatever else. Well, then start doing some of these other things that are very important. Um, get out of Sodom. We need to restore the rule of law. All right? And I'm talking secular stuff here. All right? I mean, it's tied in with the scriptures. Understand that, too. But um, there are certain things that need to be done that are carnal, that are part of this world. And you can't just hide behind this thing of, well, you know, it doesn't matter, brother. It doesn't matter. You're getting carnal. You're getting worldly. And whatever. Well, the Bible says I'm supposed to care for the things of the world how I may please my wife. All right. And uh, it's not going to be very pleasing to my wife if I end up in prison someday for hate speech or some kind of nonsense. Just because I disagree with somebody else's beliefs, that's now hate speech. Um, hate speech laws should be overthrown. Hate speech laws have no place among a civilized nation. Uh, it's wicked. Extremely wicked. And uh, again, do something. Find some way to become active. You know, I'd love to see some young people out there saying, you know what, I'm going to go and I'm going to study law or I'm going to do whatever. You know, do the research yourself. Brother Brian, could you do a video for us? No, I'm not doing a video for you. I can't. I have enough stuff to do already. Um, I'm doing what I can. Again, if I had some church building someplace, uh, talk about a waste of time. Uh, I've been to church buildings. I was raised in church buildings. And... Um, I think there's very few things are, that are not a greater uh, waste of time and money. I'm not going to waste my time on that stuff. It's a social club, and then you have to incorporate it and all the other stuff. No thank you. Um, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What can we do about this? How do we become a more militant church? A church of Christians, onward Christian soldiers marching as to war with the cross of Jesus going on before the old hymn. Um, and again, another thing, uh, war is God's judgment on sin. And um, Bob Jones Sr. said that, and I have lots of issues with that man, but uh, war is God's judgment on sin here, and hell is God's judgment on sin here in the hereafter. Uh, that's a true statement. doesn't matter who made it. 
I don't care if the black pope made that statement, it still would be true. Um, so I see people that profess to be Christians and they say, well, I hope we don't you know, go towards civil war or some other type of a war situation. That would be terrible. Well, I just would hate the suffering and everything else. Uh, again, the free market has to have collapses and crashes. People have to be destroyed as a result of bad things happening because then the good people can rebuild. The good people can come out and say, okay, now that this bad stuff happened, now we can come back and we can restore this and we can rebuild this and whatever else. And if that doesn't happen, you just have, you just keep going on into the future and, and it just gets worse and worse. I mean, it's inevitable. One side will rise up and destroy the other side. You know, right now we have all this stuff going on with Russia versus America. And I was kind of thinking, you know, they'll probably let things go to after the selection here in 2024. I don't think it's going to go that far. Quite frankly, um, the Americans military launched an attack on Sevastopol from Ukraine with these attackums, this attackums system. I forget what attackums stands for. You can put it in the comment section if you know. But something missile system, American tactical command missile system or something like that. And, you know, only the Americans are trained how to use those things. And so they, that was an, an attack by American troops on Russia. I've also heard that there have been drone attacks on Moscow. Um, how is that appropriate? How is that okay? You know, I, it just boggles my mind how people can defend this. The actions of, you know, our military slash government blows my mind. But, you know, I mean, again, if, if uh, Russia was doing that to America, launching drone attacks on um, Washington, D.C., that we'd be calling for war. So, uh, will war be a bad thing? Uh, no, not really. Uh, war is what's needed right now. It's the same thing as this economy. Um, oh, I hope we don't have an economic crash. We have to have an economic crash. What are you talking about? Um, without an economic crash, this system won't come down and we're going to have slavery, perpetual slavery, debt slavery. And, you know, we'll see all of our, uh, our um, standard of living just continue to go down. So, I'll stop ranting now. <laughs> uh, just angers me to see all this stuff happening. But, um... Getting back here to the original trail. So, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Let's come up with some ideas as the body of Christ. Let's uh, restore our the army of Jesus Christ. Oh, they might come out and call us terrorists or whatever. They'll call us all kinds of names. They're very hateful people. They're very bigoted, narrow-minded people. We can't think about that. You can't worry about that. We know what we are. Um... We want peace. We're not advocating uh, a religious government or something that um, puts our enemies to death or something like that. That's not what I'm advocating. I'm advocating the Lord coming and helping us to restore law and order. Because that's ultimately what has to be done. No, brother, I don't agree because we're just leaving soon. And Okay, do that. Um... I'm looking forward to when Jesus Christ comes back, but you know what? It's not going to be for a little while. I really believe that. Well, you don't know that for sure. Uh, you don't know it for sure either, that the Lord's going to be coming sometime here soon, within the next month or two. I think we're going to be feeling that. When that time comes, I think we'll have the discernment to say, okay, I can feel it now. So, I want to be found of the Lord being active when he says, come up hither. I want him to know that I was trying my best to stand for his word and to preserve freedom and liberty. So that will be it. Thank you for watching.